This video isn't made to tell people their opinion is wrong because everyone is going to have their own feelings on what makes a game good or engaging for them. But after seeing a lot of people say online that Sandland is just some mid-anime game, I really wanted to share my own thoughts on it as honestly, I really like the game and I think it's good, especially when stacked against the slew of often mid-anime games I play on this channel. First, I wanted to find what I consider to be mid when it comes to anime games in particular, though this could really be any game. I'd classify a game as being mid as one that isn't completely unplayable, but instead as like one that just feels half-cooked lacking or unfinished. They aren't compelling to play, they lack features or systems, they're devoid of any comfort features, they play and or control clunky, and primarily they don't do anything other than get a player into a world to run them through the motions leading to a finish. The term is used online with a ton of anime games. As I'll admit, the subset has really built a reputation for having middling quality games. It happens a ton because a lot of times companies want to do what they can to make the most profit off their big IPs and the video game industry pulls so much money that it's seen as lucrative. Slap together a team of devs or pay an existing group to put together something bare bones and advertise it to cash grab off a series name. It obviously works as anime games go back as far as video games do and we've only seen more and more titles throughout the years. Sometimes I think I was foolish to make a page centric to anime games because, as I've said earlier, they built a poor reputation, and outside what I'd call a small portion of gamers, the gaming community has basically shunned them. In many cases, for good reason. While I understand a few points of why people are pointing out Sandland as being mid, though, I personally see a lot of reasons this game sits above that mark, and in my eyes, it feels like a polished and well thought out title just with a few things that could have been better, as you'd find with pretty much every game. Hey, I'll start off with the meatiest and most talked about mechanic of the game, the combat. It's probably the most centric point of people's opinion, and I see a lot of people describe it as clunky, repetitive, and lacking depth. Most of the combat will see you using a small variety of vehicles, and you'll essentially be doing one of three things in combat. Shooting explosives, shooting bullets, or dodging attacks. I do admit in most ways that's pretty simple combat scenario, and I'm not going to go after anyone for wanting more from their combat. That said though, I personally find it to be a lot of fun, and I think there's a few features that I feel designed to maintain excitement and variety throughout combat scenarios despite its surface level simplicity, as long as you're willing to engage with them despite not needing to do so to succeed. The most enjoyment I have for the combat is the ability to switch weapons while reloading and having the switched out weapons continue to reload while you use the other one. Maybe you don't play enough of these game types, but that little feature in itself felt refreshing to me once I realized that was a thing I could do, as I could unload everything I had with one gun, hit reload, and then immediately switch to the other weapon and continue attacking while the first weapon finished reloading. Cycling back and forth between the weapons like that makes it so that you can nearly endlessly be attacking without pause, and to me, increases the fun of the encounters with that one simple mechanic. Another thing I really like to do is switch up what vehicle I'm using mid-combat. Each of the vehicles has their own little specialty, weapon set, and way of using the environment, so even if it's not needed, I find myself switching vehicles often in battle just to add some variety to how I'm playing, and to try different things out with different enemies. I also have a lot of fun in some situations switching to the jumping bot and jumping up on nearby environments to change the elevation fighting at just to straight up avoid certain enemies that can't reach that elevated place. 99.9% .9 of the time you can stick to one vehicle and win the skirmish without really switching but honestly I think the idea is that you don't do that. The game would improve if it forced or incentivized you more for making constant switches to vehicles and there are some limited mostly terrain based situations where that does happen but mostly it's just implied that you should be switching it up a lot. Switching itself is super easy to do and it happens very fast in battle making it easy to switch back and forth without delay. There are no cooldowns or anything stopping you from switching from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle and despite not having a lot of complexity in the core shoot dodge mechanics, I see the combat as being fairly well thought out in the way that it was obviously considered to design these mechanics to occur without any penalty to players. Another side note is that there are special skills you can use during battle as well. I probably don't use them as much as I could, but 
every time you level your character up, you get not only a point to distribute to your character, which enables you to learn power up skills, but also you get a point to do the same for two of your party members. The sheriff's skills are focused on combat and allow you to summon him to fight with you. And thieves skills are mostly centered around getting more or better loot. I'm a loot fiend myself, so I'm mostly focused on those skills, which is why in gameplay you don't really see me ever using the sheriff's skills. Still, it's an option. The overall leveling and skill building is basic though, and I see it critiqued as it's primarily only just serviceable. But I do find the skill additions to make the game more fun the more I play and grow my character. The vehicle customization is also a lot of fun and has some level of variety to how you gear out your vehicles. Every vehicle is different in the parts it has, and I won't do a full breakdown of all of them here, but the vehicles have a good series of core parts you can swap out or level up to tailor the vehicle to your needs. It's the basic stuff like choosing armor, speed, or attack over each other, but why I mention this is that there's also different weapon attributes you can have and specialty chips you can install which go just a bit beyond the basic affecting your battle styles a lot more. These include things like having your explosives start higher on the ground after impact, causing AOE damage to enemies, or having sticky explosives where your explosives stick to targets and detonate later after impact, which allows you to miss the targets directly and still damage them, or you can trick enemies into walking them. A lot of fun stuff you can do. I'm not trying to play all this combat stuff up as being the greatest of all time here, but this is all serving a point I'm trying to make that while it's not the most AAA level feature of the game, they've clearly done more than the absolute bare bones minimum here, and they've had at least a little thought to the player's experiences and tried to offer more than what you'd just find in truly mid game. And yes, hand-to-hand -hand combat is wildly basic, but you don't just really fight hand-to-hand -hand that often, so I don't see that it matters all that much in the grand scheme of it all. Vehicles can be customized and built, and as for getting vehicle parts, they are dropped by enemies you defeat, chests you open, or they can be crafted at your home base once you've completed the quest to get that villager to live there. This gives you incentive to explore the world, dungeons, and to kill overworld creatures as their mats are later used to craft higher tier mats or parts. If you really wanted to, you could go outside and grind for materials to craft and upgrade all the best parts, but you're able to get by just fine from killing the enemies as you pass them, quests, and completing bounty hunts. The game also has a few things you can do outside of main quests, all of which primarily can be completed for the end purpose of you being able to craft new and better things. The least exciting in my opinion are the dungeons, which feel randomly generated and basically are just little mazes with simple puzzles which you navigate to find rare artifacts and top tier crafting material. They are usually filled with a few trickly placed enemies and aren't entirely boring, I just don't think that this aspect was fleshed out well. There's a few you explore as part of the main story which are awesome and quite epic, but the ones you run into out and about range from barely interesting to pointless feeling. Still, materials are great and the atmosphere is a change of pace from the dry desert. Bounty hunting is another activity you can get into. There's a bounty guy at the first junker town you go to and as the game continues and you grow in levels, more bounties are available to take. The actual art of fighting is just as you'd expect from a boss, but the rewards are generally awesome as you either get rare loot, usually found only in dungeons, or you get a vehicle core, which is used to craft new, modified, or additional vehicles, and is a pretty rare reward in the game outside of just replaying bounties. Another benefit to the bounties is that they take you to areas you might have otherwise completely overlooked while roaming or doing the main and side quests. You know, it's hard to put this into words as everything is essentially a desert, but the game does offer a certain level of variety and scenic areas despite that, and doing bounties will take you to them. Lastly are the side quests. I think this is an area I sit kind of on the fence with in the overall discussion of mid. On one hand, the side quests stink because they are mostly always some type of fetch, quest type scenario, like a rescue and return mission, or a grab an item, or four and return. That's not a highlight, but what I do like is that most of the side quests involve a story about a person that's relatively unique and plays a part in developing that character's story, while also providing some more world building about the experiences of the people in the Sandland. This matters even more because these people you help often move to your hometown base, they'll open a shop, provide a service, or enhance a service, and the side quests are a great way to make those NPCs have some level of depth to them, instead of just being a generic placeholder for the object you go in order to buy stuff. Personally, I pin this under things you generally don't find in mid games. Story is a big reason why I play games, and honestly, I like the story of Sandland all right. 
It starts off a little slow, and along with the limitation of base mechanics, it made for a pretty rough start. But after about five hours, everything really started to hit their stride. I don't really want to talk about story spoilers, but the highlight is really that of the characters. The main character, the demon prince Beelzebub, frames himself as this heartless villain demon, but his actions speak in direct conflict to that every step of the story, and he's quite likable. He's a bit funny and lacking in self-awareness, but overall an incredibly loyal and just figure. He decides to lend his powers to a sheriff with a revealed past I found incredibly interesting, and the two, along with two side characters named Thief and Anne, set out to find water access that can be used by everyone to increase the quality of life amongst the Sandland. Thief and Anne both have backstories too, by the way, they are just developed a lot later in the game. The story is a light-hearted, dopey, cartoon type of adventure, which isn't too radically deep in any sort of way, but it plays to the strengths well, and it carries the motion of pushing farther into the Sandlands well enough. I didn't personally find a lot of disconnection with the story and the gameplay. I played a lot of highly mid-games based off IPs that have really jumpy feeling to them. Things where everything seems to skip ahead all of a sudden, and you're left with a bunch of questions. That doesn't happen even once in this one. It flows naturally, and it doesn't feel like there's filler or that critical, crucial elements are being left out. I played some anime games that are literally so bad that after four to five hours of gameplay, I still don't have an introduction to half of the characters, and I really have no idea who they are, why they are, or what we're even doing. I guess the expectation is that I have read the manga or watched the anime well enough that I have all the backstory, but I don't find that to be good game design, and it's a telltale sign to me that the game is mid. Now, I haven't seen Sandland or read the manga, so they may be leaving out details or dropping some incredible character developing moments for the game, but as a game only player, that's never been obvious to me at any point during a gameplay. The story and characters all made sense and flow well from beginning to end. Along with all that, the story missions also carry some variety to them and puts you in situations you don't normally encounter during gameplay outside of those missions, such as a few scenarios where you're running from or after a character, and those can often involve some QTEs needing to be successful or just some good old freeform movements to avoid enemies while the camera is locked in a specific view and you have no control over your character's speed. I do believe they show an extra level of work was involved and some extra thought put into development and player satisfaction. But I'm not stating I think the game is a full-on AAA game, but instead just focusing on how the game is above the low standard of being just another mid-anime game. I do understand why some people might not like the game or why they feel that it's not the best game or even very engaging to them. The story may not be for you. You may not like the type of vehicle combat, you may not take an interest in the side content, or you might hate that the game isn't overwhelmingly challenging. But I hope that while you may not agree with me, that you can at least see why someone might like this game and why I don't think this game is mid. To me, it's engaging, relaxing, interesting, and it keeps me playing. I feel like there's a decent variety of things to do without being too overwhelming. There's a lot to collect, there's a base to build, customization to be had, and a lot to explore. There's small thought out mechanics, fun cutscenes, interesting characters, and fun customization with parts, colors, and decals. There's a stream of new items that unlock more and more the longer you play and the more you accomplish. I think that despite this not being a AAA masterpiece, there was a level of love that was put into this game and some care and thought about the player experience instead of just doing the generic baseline and cashing in on as little as possible. I really like the game and I hope that there's others out there too who give this a chance and maybe find their own enjoyment with it. I'm Dre with Yoko so Otaku, and if you like this content and want to see more coverage of anime games and other stuff right. weebs probably this like, hit subscribe man. and check out our other videos. If you like US made anime gear, support us at like Gould Gaming and save 12% using code Senpai Squad. Finally, if you want to yell at me for being just another idiot YouTuber, leave me a comment because you'll feel great and I'll get some sweet engagement.